Do you feel overwhelmed and confused about all the skincare products that exist on the market? Regardless of whether you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, and beyond, but you're really interested in investing in skincare, taking care of your skin, whether that's acne, hyperpigmentation, or anti-aging, but just don't know where to start. Well, today's video is made for you. I'm gonna go over my recommended regimen and step-by-step -step on how to build an affordable, effective, as well as doable skincare routine for all ages. Hi, my name is Dr. Jenny Liu. I'm a board certified dermatologist and welcome back to my YouTube channel. And if you're like me who believes that skincare does not have to be fancy, complicated, and pricey to be effective, then smash that like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Now, when it comes to skincare, it is so personal. So today I really wanna just give you guys guidance and structure on how you would go about building a routine. You obviously would want to take this framework and build upon it depending on you know your skin concerns, what ingredients you are interested in incorporating, and certainly what is reasonable and doable for you based on your budget and your lifestyle. Majority of this video, I'm actually gonna focus on building a routine with the pyramid and focusing on skin rejuvenation, so anti-aging concerns. Because first and foremost, that's a really common topic Topic concern that I get asked a lot on my social media as well as you know in practice but also these are concerns that can be more readily addressed with skincare products that are available over the counter and in stores versus like acne hyperpigmentation melasma those certainly there are great drugstore products but majority of it to really effectively target those concerns and treat it is really with prescription treatment in that essence it's really harder to build a skincare pyramid but if if you are interested in learning what a pyramid would look like for those who have acne as their primary concern or say melasma as their primary concern, then let me know in the comments below and I'd be happy to make a video on that. Okay, so starting off at the base of the pyramid, this is really the skincare essentials. So what everybody should be doing, whether you're a baby or someone in you know 70s, 80s, or 90s. And these are really the steps to keep our skin healthy, which is cleansing, moisturizing, and photo protecting or sunscreen, scent protective clothing, reducing the oxidative and UV damage on skin. So sometimes when we kind of use skin care kind of in a generalized term, I've seen people or at least think of that as like, oh, something fancy. Only people have, you know, who have the luxury of spending money on products should be doing. But that's really not true. I talk to a lot of my medical patients when it comes to treating psoriasis and eczema regarding skincare. Skincare to me is just taking care of your skin. And that can be the bare basics, like the essentials, all the way to something that is super fancy, that is nice to have, but not necessary. So skincare to me is just like you care for your teeth by brushing your teeth, right? And so there can be a lot of different versions of it, which is why it's so personal. But when I say skincare, it doesn't, don't think of automatically, oh, I have to have like a vitamin C serum, a hyaluronic acid. Those are definitely not necessary. The basics of skincare that are essential, and why they are essential is that is what's needed to keep our skin first and foremost healthy healthy and functional. When we think of our skin, aside from the like aesthetics, the appearance of our skin is really the job of keeping everything in that's good and keeping bad things out. I mean, our skin is the body's largest organ. It is so essential for survival. It's involved in temperature regulation, protecting our body from harmful environmental, you know, allergens, bacteria, so many different things. And so to talk about like hyperpigmentation, acne, those are important, right? But you can't talk about treating those when your skin barrier and your skin isn't even functional and healthy to begin with, which is why when it comes to skincare, first and foremost, that making sure that our skin is just being supplied with the steps and products to keep it healthy and making sure it's functional. Then you can get on top of that and then enhancing your skin, right? Whether it's removing post acne marks, targeting fine lines and wrinkles, etc. So cleansing, moisturizing and sun protecting. Again, I'm not going to go too much into products, but just understand that those are things that we all should be doing on a daily basis. As far as like the frequency, you know, certainly sunscreen every single day, moisturizing every time you do cleanse, you can even moisturize without cleansing, but you definitely want to moisturize after you cleanse to reduce the risk of your skin drying 
drying out more, more transepidermal water loss, and cracks and fissures in your skin, and that you know dried skin barrier. As far as cleansing, I would say pick cleansers that are formulated for your skin type. So in general, more creamy cleansers for you know, sensitive dry skin, and maybe like foamy cleansers for oily skin. But again, you know this video is not so much on product recommendations, but merely steps for you to follow in building that routine. The frequency of cleansing should also be really modified based on your skin type. You know, in general, we say twice a day. The most important one I view is before you sleep to remove all the buildup, the residue, the sunscreen, makeup that you have put on your skin throughout the day. You know, most of us sleep when it is actually nighttime and our skin does have a circadian rhythm. It does most of the repair overnight. And so you really want to make sure that you are removing everything effectively off your skin so that it doesn't create additional residue and inflammation on the skin so that way your skin is able to fully repair your itself while you sleep if you do use a lot of really heavy duty creams you know mullions petrolatum overnight it may make sense to wash that off with a gentle cleanser in the morning but if you have really sensitive skin and you don't wear a lot of heavy duty moisturizers like a simple splash of water is all you need in the morning and you know similarly for moisturizers again go with formulations that you like best that are suitable for your skin type you know in general oily combination skin may enjoy oil-free lighter lotions a gel cream formulations those with more dry and sensitive skin may want thicker creams, thicker lotions, you know, even petrolatum is an appropriate moisturizer. It just depends on what your skin needs. And also depending on the season, right? Your skin should not be locked into one moisturizer throughout the year, unless you live in an environment where the season doesn't really change. But assuming you would live in a place where there's winter, spring, fall, and summer, your skin is going to change a little bit with the season. And so you want to make sure that that just like we change our clothes depending on the season that the moisturizers and maybe even cleansers and sunscreen kind of match what your skin needs are depending on the season and then sunscreen again so many wonderful options pick one that you like enough so that way you would want to put it on your skin on a daily basis but yes you definitely need to wear sunscreen 365 days out of the year regardless when it's rain and shine because ultraviolet radiation in particular uva that causes a lot of the wrinkles leathery skin and hyperpigmentation comes through clouds comes through glass so unless you live in a black box all the time sunscreen is definitely really essential all year round okay once you have the basics established that can be all you need and just do on a regular basis and really 90% of your skin needs is really just that you don't need to add much more especially if you're someone who is young teens and early 20s but for majority of us who feel like we want something a little extra especially if we have a specific skincare concerns, this is where we can move up on the next level in the pyramid. And this is where it is still very personal depending on what your skin needs are. But in general, I find that adding in a topical retinoid can be helpful for majority of the individuals. The reason why I say that is topical retinoids, especially when it comes to prescription retinoids, can help to target acne. So something that we often see in the, our teens, even in our adult years, hyperpigmentation. So someone who is struggling from post-acne marks, melasma, you no know, hyperpigmentation associated with sun damage, as well as help to target fine lines and wrinkles. So if you are wanting to invest in something or looking for just the next best level of evidence in keeping skin healthy, help to rejuvenate your skin, I would add in a topical retinoid. Now I mentioned tretinoin or prescription just because those have the best level of evidence, but you don't necessarily need to. It again, all goes back to what your goals are. If you are someone who struggles with acne, tretinoin prescription is great, but so is adapaline over the counter. And then similarly, if you're someone who is purely interested in just helping to rejuvenate your skin, restore your skin, repair your skin, topical retinol, retinol dehydes can be wonderful and far less irritating. So it all distills down to your concerns but I feel like a topical retinoid of some sort can be helpful for really a majority of individuals who are seeking you know additional products on top of the basics along the same line the alpha or beta hydroxy acid-based product can work very much 
complementary to topical retinoids together or in replacing the retinoids, just again, depending on skin concerns. But especially when we're talking about skin rejuvenation, targeting skin aging, a retinoid and alpha hydroxy acid, in particular glycolic acid, have really been shown to be kind of that dynamic dual in improving kind of the, the overall skin concerns on even skin texture, skin tone, reducing dullness, helping with skin turnover, improving fine lines, improving skin hydration. So in my mind, I find that a topical retinoid and an alpha hydroxy acid is really the next step up when it comes to like ingredients to have in your routine, especially if skin rejuvenation is really the top of your concern. And how you would incorporate these two ingredients if you are interested really depends on, again, your skin type, what other products you have in your routine, what those products are. But I think a general good rule of thumb is avoiding using them together in the same routine. So either splitting them up morning and night, knowing that topical retinoids should be used at night because of the scent degradation component like you know we know ultraviolet radiation visible light will degrade retinoids so retinoids should always be reserved at nighttime so knowing that you can either use your alpha hydroxy acid product in the morning or consider like that skin cycling trend where you may use a topical retinoid say monday through thursday monday through friday and then an alpha hydroxy acid in place of your topical retinoid saturday and sunday or something like that which is kind of my typical way of using these two ingredients so you just have to figure out a way you know that can help with addressing your concerns and minimizing the irritation but again there's so many different methods but i would say when it comes to skin rejuvenation those are probably the next step up that have really excellent level of evidence backed by studies to show them to be effective in targeting concerns okay so the next tier up from retinoids and alpha hydroxy acid would be your vitamin c serum, hyaluronic acid serum, and a peptide treatment. These again are really popular trending ingredients, really nice to have, but not necessary. And in my view, if you are struggling, if you want to simplify your routine and just really want a minimal routine, I would definitely start with the retinoids and alpha hydroxy acids first before you are incorporating these. Because certainly vitamin C can offer additional protection, additional skin benefits, but you are going to get that with your sunscreen, right? And the brightening benefits and the collagen stimulation that you may get from vitamin C, you're definitely getting that from your alpha hydroxy acid and retinoids. So these are, like I said, really not necessary, but nice to have, especially for those that have used a topical retinoid for a long time and just want and is looking for something additional that may provide benefit to the skin. Uh, me personally, even though I say these are nice, but not necessary, I definitely have regular C in my routine on a daily basis. I mean, to the point where I almost feel naked without a vitamin C serum every morning, just like I would without sunscreen. It has become like a holy grail of my AM routine. I've been using consistently for the past almost 10 years. Vitamin C can offer additional skin brightening benefits, help, helping with hyperpigmentation, definitely support collagen, and then most importantly, offer additional protection against environmental and UV invisible light aggressors that we get on a daily basis. So really great complement to your sunscreen. But again, not necessary. It's just very personal. Similarly, that is how I feel about peptides too. I love peptide-based treatments and certainly it is an ingredient that I have started incorporating into my nighttime routine on a regular basis for the past few years. And I definitely find that number one, it was a great alternative for when I couldn't use a retinoid during pregnancy, during times of the month or certain days of the week when my skin was super sensitive and I need to stop my retinoid for whatever reason. Peptides, again, was a great alternative to help support collagen, support my skin barrier health. So I'm, I know that I'm still doing something for my skin, uh, giving it nutrients and support for it to repair itself, but not necessarily with a topical retinoid. So again, it's one of those things where it can be a great substitute or like something that you can use in addition to retinoids. But if you are one who can tolerate a retinoid and can use it, definitely retinoids is the OG and the way to go. And the first thing that I would absolutely add on before any of these other products. And again, Again, how you incorporate all of these is really personal, depends on the formulation and what you know what your what your skin type is. I would say for me, my general rule of thumb when I make recommendations to my patients and followers alike on social media is I wouldn't use more than two treatments or two active ingredients in one routine because beyond that, you don't know if they're interacting, if they're even absorbing, and it can cause more irritation. So for
for example, I must have a vitamin C serum in the morning. So cleanse vitamin C. And then if I need additional hydration, maybe a hyaluronic acid base serum, maybe a hyaluronic acid that contains peptides, but you just have to be mindful. The one absolute kind of thing to watch out for is you don't want to use any copper based peptides with L ascorbic acid because those can interfere and kind of really oxidize the vitamin C. But aside from that, it is something where it's like if you were skin can tolerate it and it's not too complicated, go for it. But I personally, like I said, don't recommend more than two active ingredients. And at nighttime, what I like to do is cleanse my retinoids, you know, a peptide treatment or even like a peptide active in a moisturizer. Kind of that is like a, sim a way of simplifying. And then that's it. And then maybe a few times a week, alternately my topical retinoid with an alpha hydroxy acid treatment. And really that is kind of my structure of my morning and evening routine for many years now. I do like to try different products, but kind of the concept and the active ingredients that I'm seeking out in each routine has kind of pretty much stayed the same. And then really after that, you know, I think of is really things that have some good preliminary data. I think it's one of those things where it's also often very expensive and really up to you whether you want to splurge. And these are kind of like growth factor treatments. There are some preliminary studies on stem cells, you know, growth factors. I think of like Skin Medica is one that really is famous for. So it's again, absolutely not necessary. Um, and certainly if you have enjoyed using those and it's worked well for you, by all means continue, but this is where, you know, they're pretty pricey. So I kind of view this section of the pyramid almost kind of kind of colliding with the apex, which is cosmetic procedures, if that is something you are interested in. Again, so personal, not telling you that you should get it. It's really just your goals, your budget, and what you're comfortable doing. But you know, if you are looking for additional ways of improving your skin that are beyond skincare, this is like the apex where it's pricey, but you probably will get definitely more bang for your buck depending on what you end up doing and can be a great complement to the rest of your pyramid, the rest of your skincare routine. So here it can be anywhere from laser resurfacing treatments to microneedling to chemical peels to Botox to fillers. I mean, the whole gamut, again, very personal, but this is where I view as the apex, definitely more nice to do, but not necessary. And it is super expensive. So you gotta just do what makes sense for you. All right, guys. So that is kind of my stepwise approach in building a skincare routine especially if you are in your late 20s, 30s and beyond and wanting to start off and have some structure on how to build a routine to target skin rejuvenation and then skin aging concerns. Again, the basics of skincare, on top of that, retinoids, alpha hydroxy acids, on top of that, your antioxidants, hyaluronic acid, peptides, and then really on top of that, I view as like cosmetic procedures. So I hope that flow makes sense to you. Again, let me know in, in the comments below any questions that you may have. And if you want me to build something similar or talk about how I would structure a skincare pyramid for those who have acne and hyperpigmentation, I'd be happy to do one as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.